Widget was an animated TV series that lasted for two seasons. Launched in 1990, it focused on the purple alien title character who, along with the help of some environmental enthusiast children, protects Earth from evil motherfuckers who look to contribute to the pollution movement. I have very vague memories of the show's existence. I honestly don't remember much of anything about it at all. And I really don't feel like going back and watching any episodes to compare its screen to game accuracy. I really don't care about that. The question is, is this a good game? Well, let's see what it has to offer. It's a side-scrolling platformer. You control Widget, and you walk around like an absolute doofus, shooting balls at random schmucks that want you dead, with each stage's goal to stop someone who is harming the Earth in some fashion, whether it be kidnapping animals or smuggling whales, you know, that kind of shit. The controls are responsive, but you move slow, and the jumping is spotty. It just feels kind of stiff when controlling your mid-air movements. You only have a couple different variations of hang time, too. It is pressure sensitive, but you'll only either jump pretty high, jump medium, or jump short. There's not a lot of freedom here, which really doesn't help when you're in tight spaces like this, because your sprite is pretty big, and unless you pinpoint it right, you'll smack the ceiling and be sent into a pit in a hurry. The bounce back you get from being hit can send you into pits as well, so you don't want to be on the back edge of any platforms while fighting something. Another annoyance is the damn beeping you'll constantly hear when your life meter is low. I get it, I'm dying. It makes me just want to commit suicide so I don't have to hear it anymore. In game, I mean, not in real life. Just because Legend of Zelda did it, doesn't mean it's necessarily a good idea. Your weapon has its pros and cons. Like you can fire in five directions, but you can only shoot one at a time and you have to wait for the slow moving bullet to leave the screen or hit something before you can fire the next shot. On the bright side, you can collect upgrades that increase the speed and power of your attacks, although rapid rate would have been nice. You do get special power-ups in the form of transformations. Widget was a shapeshifter in the cartoon, so it makes sense to use this ability as a function in the game. You'll get one of these transformations added to your inventory after completing the stage. And after finishing the first level, you'll get to do the next three in the order of your choosing. So there's a bit of a Mega Man type of pick the order yourself kind of vibe, at least for the middle part of the game because you have to do stage 1 and the finale, stage 5, at the beginning and end respectively. But there's one ability that you need to have in order to finish one of the middle stages. It's literally impossible otherwise, so you're forced to exit the level when you get stuck here. Thankfully, there is a function that lets you leave a stage, which is useful for collecting items or backtracking to hidden spots in a stage you completed earlier. To use this teleportation, you have to talk to Mega Brain, who doubles as a sage, giving you bad advice, or no advice at all. Some brain on this dipshit. But like I said, you can leave a stage, and he'll provide a crude map of the stage upon request. I think it's kind of bullshit that you're unable to pass here without the transformation. It's kind of like Bucky O'Hare where you need Blinky to get past the ice, so you have to do the green planet before the blue one. It shouldn't be that way. I think that your path should be made easier by collecting a certain transformation first, but not impossible, in my opinion. The thing about these transformations you have to keep in mind is that they use up magic points. You get a meter at the bottom of the screen next to your life bar that shows how many you have left. To bump up your magic points, you can collect purple circles, while the purple stars increase the max of your magic meter. And red stars will increase the meter of your health while the hearts will fill up your health. The green guns will increase the power of your gun, while the green star increases the speed. There are also extra lives in the form of widget heads, while the dollar signs award you points. Who cares? And I think that question sums up the whole game. Who cares, really? It's not a complete, unplayable piece of garbage. There are much worse games on the console, but it's highly flawed, and the good points are nothing special, so the bad outweighs the good by quite a bit. So in the first stage, you're sent in to investigate Mega Slank's hypnotizing of people on the planet Earth. 
These giant centipedes will slowly crawl in your direction and they'll teleport a bit after each of your attacks, but as long as you keep your distance, you're fine. Just watch out for the slow moving projectiles coming from the gator dickheads from underneath. Avoid the cacti here, it'll deal damage and shoot down the mosquitoes that fly overhead. You won't be able to slip into here until you get the mouse transformation later that leads to a green star. Then you've got these worms that pop out of the ground. Stay back and fire. You can hit them before they even pounce. After taking out this gator, jump into the pipe, and now you're inside. Kill these slow moving ghosts and grab the money up here, if you want. Watch your trajectory on this jump. If you jump too high, you'll smack the ceiling and fall into the pit. Kill the gators from across the pits before moving on, and grab the purple circle. These hamburgers will chase you down, so shoot as you retreat, and thankfully they don't respawn cause this game would never end. Head up here to grab the gun, this way for a heart, and slip up here for a red star. Slip down the ladder and immediately kill the mosquito, and after taking out the centipede, you won't be able to get the purple star without the birdman transformation which you'll get later on. Lure the burgers out, blast them as quickly as possible, and head into the door for the next segment. After taking out these pricks, head down here and backtrack a bit for a gun. Then you've got some conveyor belts. Watch out for the mosquitoes on the way across. Don't jump right away. Let them come to you and kill them, or let them pass. When you get here, take the low route to slip up here and get a red star, and then back up to the top where you'll deal with some burgers and gators. And there's a large heart before the door to the boss, Mega Slank. He'll jump in these high arc patterns while throwing balls at you. Keep your distance and fire as rapidly as you can, just keep in mind you're on a conveyor belt. Though it looks more dangerous than it actually is, because it drags you away from the pit to your death but it can still mess with your positioning. After dealing enough shots, you'll take them out, get a brief cutscene showcasing your victory, and you'll acquire the mouse transformation power-up. So now you can go back to stage one and take on that hidden area if you so choose. So now it's on to the next stage, which is your choice between stages two, three, and four. Pick stage three next, cause you're gonna need the power-up here to advance through stage two. You'll get a cutscene showing that Dr. Dante is stealing shit from Earth to sell to other aliens, so you gotta stop him. This snake will fire a slow moving projectile your way. Kill him quickly and move forward so you can crouch underneath it. Do short jumps cause this area is narrow as hell, and hitting the ceiling of spikes is damaging, plus it causes you to fall into the short pit. There's a hidden area down here, but you can't get to it yet. Later on, when you get both the dolphin and birdman transformations, you'll be able to fly down here and down the ladder, kill the snakes, slip down the illusion floor for a purple circle, and then use the dolphin transformation to swim through here for a red star. Crouch down to let the bat sail over you, climb the ladder here, and wait for these bats to sail by before moving on. Don't go backwards here, even if one of the bats leaves an item, cause you'll get stuck and have to exit the stage and start again, it's bullshit. Then you'll meet this yeti that bounces towards you, hit and run, although with your speed I use the term run loosely, and enter the door up ahead. You won't be able to get the gun up here until you get the power of flight, which you'll get in this stage. These apples will fall from where they're hanging and then bounce from side to side. Keep some distance from them and blast them from a safe spot, they won't move towards you. When you get the Rockman transformation, you can blast through here for a purple star, but since you don't have it, climb this ladder. Take up the snake from an angle down here and then worry about the apples. Grab the heart here before the ladder, and when you get here, use the mouse transformation so you can jump across the branch here to the door. You're in another narrow area here. These gray rattlesnakes spit slow moving projectiles and wander back and forth. Kill them from a distance, much like the other snakes. Duck to avoid the bats, and when these knights charge at you, try to jump over them. It's not easy cause they're so freaking big. You also might get lucky and not see them at all, but if you do, you very well could take some damage. Use the mouse transformation to fit through here, and you can climb the ladder here, or optionally press on for a purple circle. Just gotta jump over the spikes and avoid the bullshit coming down from above. 
when you do get up to the ladder, let this dumbass yeti take himself out and hug the wall to get the large heart on your way to the boss, Dr. Dante, who is like Jekyll and Hyde because he transforms back and forth between personas. He'll only attack while in the evil mode, but when he's in his good guy mode, he'll not only refrain from attacking, but he won't take any damage either, so it's essentially a shield. He'll toss wrenches at you and jump around. Let him jump over you and fire at him rapidly, or as rapidly as you can. Just watch out for the wrenches. They'll take some bizarre patterns. When you get enough shots in, you'll finish him off, get a cutscene of Dante bitching about his loss, and you'll get the Birdman transformation. As mentioned earlier, the Birdman transformation lets you fly temporarily. At this point, I should probably point out that you already have a cannon transformation in your inventory to start the game. It kind of sucks though. All you can do is sit in one spot and fire a couple cannonballs in an arc pattern. They are powerful though. So now you can go on to stage 2, where Bizarre Brain is smuggling whales, probably the most difficult smuggling job I've ever heard of. The snail will fire projectiles and then hide back in its shell. So time your attack so it hits him as he lets his guard down. Then you'll deal with these clams, and they behave very similar to the snails. Shoot them when they're open, and make sure you don't get hit while you're on these platforms, because the bounce back from getting hit will send you to your doom. The good news is, once you hit him, he'll open up his shell again right away so you can spam attack at that point. Later on when you get the Rockman transformation, take out these blocks to get a purple circle, and then use the mouse transformation to get the red star. Head up this way to get onto this platform and climb up the ladder, where you can use the Birdman transformation to fly up here for a large heart and purple star. Then when you climb back, fly across here for an extra life and bypass as much of this shit as you can before entering the door. Shortly after that is a long ass water pit, and this is where you need the Birdman flight power or you'll be stuck. Later on when you get the dolphin transformation, you'll be able to come back here and go for a swim for a purple circle and a red star. Use the mouse transformation to get under here and enter the door, and in here you've got to be careful of the slippery ice floors. First take the lower path here to get the heart, and then scale the blocks. Just be careful not to slip, only use the d-pad to control your direction while jumping. Grab the gun right before the ladder downward, and watch the spikes as you traverse through the next section. These pricks will shift back and forth vertically. Wait for the opening, make short jumps, and jump over this one where there's hardly any room. You won't be able to get under him. When you reach the far right, head down this ladder, grab the purple circle, and the mouse transformation to get under here for the purple star. Climb back up, scale across these blocks back the other way, just be careful not to slip off or you'll have to weave through these pricks again. You'll then get to the door which leads to the boss, Bizarre Brain, who is basically the bizarro version of Mega Brain, being that it's a floating head with the visible brain and detached hands. He'll float around slowly back and forth, occasionally firing off small electrical bolts. Stay low, head to the other side while avoiding his bullshit, and use the platform to fire at him until he shifts back towards you. Just keep alternating from one side or the other, blast his ass or his brain, and after enough hits, he's all done. You'll get a cutscene where the whale families reunite, the stage is complete, and you'll get the Rockman transformation, which allows you to bust through the rocks. Only detriment is he's huge, so in all these places where you bust open the rocks, you have to transform back immediately. So now the one of the three choices you have that you haven't completed is stage four, where the twins, Flim and Flam McSham, I didn't just make that up, are kidnapping animals for their evil circus. Right off the bat, this rolling wheel will come towards you, so jump immediately and head up this way and drop to get past these block walls. Kill this pig thing that jumps around aimlessly, and this doofus with a gun. Quickly pump their guts full of lead. These arrows will float above and drop down when you get close, so bait them and get the hell out of the way when they do, or you can shoot it if you can get level with it. Use the mouse to get through the small gap, and then use Birdman to fly over all this shit. Shoot down the floating ring of fire, and later on when you get the dolphin transformation, you can swim through this disgusting green shit for an extra life and a red star. 
but for now you'll have to use the platforms and bypass them and head into the door. Jump over the stupid wheel thingy again and when you get here use the mouse to get under here for a heart and watch out for this spike. Let it lower before you press on. Head up this way and walk through the illusion wall to get to a heart and use the mouse transformation to get through this narrow illusion space and then the birdman to fly over this shit to get to the red and purple star. You'll need to fly back up and use the mouse again to get back so make sure you have enough magic points to make this happen. Or you can escape and start the stage again. Grab the purple circle, watch this dickhead's attacks, jump and crouch to avoid them and go through the door. Use the Birdman to fly down here for an extra life, and then over these spikes, take the top route to get the purple star and purple circle, and when the fork beats at the end here, drop down to get the gun. Use the bird to fly over this pit, shoot down the arrows, drop down for a heart, and if your flight power wears off, use it one more time to get over this pit and into the door to the boss. The Flynn Flammers have a pretty basic pattern, but it's all about locating them. They'll randomly appear in one of three spots above and quickly disappear after throwing a projectile in your general direction while a flame falls directly underneath them and hangs out on the floor. They won't stay on the screen for long and if they're on the other side of the screen you'll almost have zero chance of reaching them. Unless of course you guess. It's not a bad idea to time an attack to land right as they appear and then take a second shot based on your reaction of where they actually end up. I say stay in the middle as often as you can whenever it's safe to stand there away from the flames and jump right as it's about to appear and reposition yourself if necessary before attacking. Being in midair in time for the attack makes it much more likely to land your shot. After several hits, the twins are done for, their helper Jip conveniently decides to change his mind and freeze the animals, and now it's on to the final stage, where you get a cutscene of Mega Brain admitting he had a Mega Brain fart and accidentally allowed Widget's evil twin Ratchet into their dimension from the planet Pollutia. So now it's on to send him back. It's also worth noting that you now have the dolphin transformation, so you can go back to any of the stages previously mentioned and collect the items. Early on in stage 5, you'll meet a few new enemies. You've got pigs with pitchforks that'll charge at you when you get close, so stay back and attack from a distance. Then there are these floating eyeballs that rotate around in a circle and then slowly move in your direction after hitting it, so fire repeatedly once you connect. There's also another variation of these headbrain fucks. This one slowly shifts back and forth and fires off a slow projectile now and then. Use the Rockman transformation to knock these blocks out, and then use the mouse to get through here for a gun. This flower will send out a couple of deadly petals on either side, so get up close to it so the petals sail over you, and jump up to fire at it. Then use the cannon transformation to take out the pig down here. Otherwise you'll have to take damage trying to sneak down, but you'll have to do it from this spot to reach. Grab the purple circle on the way down, and take out the flower here to get the large heart if you need it. Then you'll get to a fork in the road, two ladders above and below you, and straight ahead. Both ladders are totally optional. If you take the upper ladder, you'll be able to fly up here for an extra life, and then over all these spikes where you'll eventually get a gun. If you go down the ladder, you'll need to use the dolphin transformation to swim through here, then you'll need the mouse transformation to get through here. But as you go up this way, you'll have to be aware of the illusion blocks, cause you can slip back into the water and not only lose health, but you'll have to reuse the transformation so you might end up getting stuck here. Thankfully the blocks that are phony are indicated by the squares being a little bit smaller. In fact you can take advantage of them by going up this way for a shortcut to the red star up ahead. Keep in mind you'll need the transformations to get back to where you came from on both of these optional areas. You'll need the mouse to take the mandatory straight path. If you have a lot of magic points, transform back so you can kill the flower, and you'll need to transform again to get through here. Then get the purple circle and fly up through these phony blocks, kill this dickhead that appears and disappears, throwing a projectile your way when he's there, and grab the purple star and fly across this gap. Deal with all these pricks, and head up and around for a green star. Then come back, drop into the gap, and head right, but watch out for the phony blocks on the floor. If you have the magic points, you can always fly over all this shit. 
You're at the home stretch now. Use the mouse to slip into the gap through these bullshit blocks for a heart if you need some health. And then right after that is the door to the boss, Ratchet. He's a pink version of that same asshole that disappears from earlier, but he'll teleport to one of six spots in this area. And he'll throw an additional fireball after you hit him. So what you want to do is move your ass as soon as you fire off your attack to get away from that. But the way the timing works, in order to hit him, you'll have to jump over his main attack or drop down a level. And then you'll have to move a second time immediately to get away from the fireball. Or move backwards as you're transitioning platforms to position yourself in one swoop. What I like to do is try not to chase him around. Just hang out on one platform around the middle so you have the same distance no matter which side he ends up on. And wait for him to show up, then hit and run. If you try to chase him, then you're putting yourself in a better position to get hit, and you won't be able to get a shot in edgewise anyway. After enough shots, you'll finish him off, get a cutscene of Widget sending Ratchet back to his planet, and getting a promotion, and the credits roll. And that's it for Widget on the NES. Believe it or not, there was actually a sequel on Super Nintendo called Super Widget, but we'll get to that one another time. Maybe. And that'll wrap up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.